with it being a few months before the release of the upcoming at time of recording Doctor Who special Revolution of the Daleks, I figured I'd air one of my biggest issues with the show over the past decade. What is this issue I hear you asking? Well sit back, relax, and subscribe because we're firing up the TARDIS for a trip down memory lane. Unlike other shows in the science fiction genre, Doctor Who is unique in the fact that every few years it essentially reboots itself with an entirely new cast and crew. However, rather than pretend like nothing has changed, like most failed reboots, Doctor Who embraces that change by having an in-universe explanation as to why the main character keeps changing their face, which is of course REGENERATION, meaning that Doctor Who can essentially exist forever, swapping out certain variables while keeping the core elements the same, with those core elements being an eccentric alien explorer traveling Traveling through time and space in a blue box with companions who fight monsters, some of which include bumper cars with breasts. They're not breasts, okay? They're Dalek bumps. And the fact that Doctor Who is as malleable as it is is exactly why it still exists today. As, much like a fully functioning TARDIS, Doctor Who is able to adapt and change to fit within the TV landscape of the time. For example, in the early 2000s, Doctor Who took inspiration from the massively successful and influential Buffy the Vampire series, with its focus on both science fiction as well as the relationships between the characters, which gave it a broader appeal than the sci-fi shows of yesteryear, which were considered by popular media to be for basement-dwelling virgins who should not be pandered to by the mainstream. In recent years, though, it seems as though the regeneration process the show undergoes every few years in order to stay fresh has been polluted with a sense of repetition, leading to the show feeling far staler than it used to. Same software, different face. Doctor Who series in the past decade can be sorted into three categories. The reboot, the series that introduces a new Doctor and or companions as well as establishing a new tone and style for the upcoming series, that is supposed to juxtapose the direction taken in the previous era. Series 5, 8 and 11 are all reboot series. The Gamble, a series that takes a risk by introducing a complex storyline that usually involves changes to the previously established canon. Series 6, 9 and 12 are all Gamble series. Finally, there's the middle ground, the series that attempts to take the best elements of the previous two series while simultaneously trying to do its own thing. These series also usually feature changes to the old companion lineup, as well as a regeneration at the end of the series. Series 7, 10, and presumably 13 are all middle ground series. If I'm wrong about series 13 then you can let me know from the future, however going off of what we already know about series 13, it seems that it will continue the current trend that is reboot, then gamble, and finally middle ground. Oh and before anyone says anything, I know there's an argument to be made that series 10 is more of a of reboot series due to his new setting and cast of characters, as well as the fact that Stephen Moffat even said that series 10 was intended to be a jumping on point for new fans. However, I still consider it to be a middle ground series, because it carries over multiple characters and plot threads from the previous few series, as well as featuring numerous callbacks to previous series which you won't understand without already having watched the show's revival. Now I know what you're thinking, that's all well and good theories but what's your point? Well my point is that it's become far too easy to predict how any given upcoming series is going to go, to the extent that we all expect the Daleks to show up at least once per series due to an alleged legal arrangement with the Terry Nation estate, in addition to the fact that the Cybermen and the Master have joined forces to take down the Doctor in every other series finale since 2014. But who has caused the show to become this predictable and repetitive? Well who better to look at than the two showrunners who've helmed the show in the past decade, Stephen Moffat and Chris Chibnall. Arguably, Stephen Moffat had an equally tough task as his immediate predecessor, Russell T. Davis. While Russell T. Davis had to revive the show for the 21st century, Stephen Moffat had to prove that it had staying power at a time where everyone thought the show was dead, to the extent that the BBC considered cancelling the show after David Tennant left because they thought that no one could ever replace him, due to him being considered by many to be the definitive Doctor of the modern era, in the same way that Tom Baker was considered the definitive Doctor of the classic era. Luckily for us though, the Matt Smith era was a huge success that helped Doctor Who break into the American market, and it was because of this initial risk and eventual success that we were all fine with the simple format that we established earlier in the video. Due to this success though, Stephen Moffat decided to replicate this format with his next Doctor, the 12th Doctor played by Peter Capaldi. However, this format was arguably far less successful the second time round for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that by about series 9, it was obvious Stephen Moffat was starting to experience some creative burnout due to him being the showrunner for not only Doctor Who, but also Sherlock, leading him to rely far more heavily on shock value and lore changes 
things in order to keep longtime fans engaged, which is a trend that continued, although to a lesser extent, into Series 10. The second reason is that unlike the Matt Smith era, by the time Capaldi came on, people were starting to see how formulaic Moffat's Doctor Who was becoming and wanted something new. Despite this though, I do not believe Stephen Moffat is the sole cause for Doctor Who feeling so samey. He just started a trend that would be continued into his successor's run. On the surface, Series 11 appears to be what fans were asking for during the later years of the Stephen Moffat era. A sort of palette cleanser with a whole new cast of characters and villains, a more grounded feel, and less of a focus on convoluted storylines and lore changes. There was one problem though, it was written by Chris Chibnall. Now before you start typing away in the comments, this is not just a video about why Chris Chibnall era Doctor Who is deeply flawed, as that's well trodden ground not only on my channel but the internet in general. My point though is that Chris Chibnall is not Stephen Moffat. He's not known for coming up with super inventive and creative concepts like the Weeping Angels, the Empty Child, and the Vashta Narada. So basing a series entirely off new concepts, which someone like Moffat at its prime may have been able to pull off, when you're better at taking something that already exists and repurposing it into something palatable for the general public, was kind of destined to fail. In addition, despite the creative team intending for the series to be a palate cleanser, the series still takes some pretty obvious inspiration from previous episodes scattered throughout the revival, such as the woman who fell to earth being very similar to the 11th hour and the planet relocation device in the Battle of Ranskorav Kalos being very similar to the ones in The Stolen Earth. I mean, disregarding whether you like or dislike series 11 or 12 for that matter, what do they actually do that you haven't seen done before? And if your answer to that question is, they had the first ever female Doctor, then I'm sorry, but that's not enough of a gimmick to effectively relaunch a franchise. Sure, it may temporarily increase interest, but as has been proven time and time again, without a unique creative vision and solid writing to back it up, it will unfortunately fall flat on its face. All of this is to say that Chris Chibnall failed to pull off a reboot series, effectively, which began to show early signs that the formula the show had relied on for years at this point did not work for the current showrunner. Now, you're thinking to yourself, what about series 12? Didn't that bring back a bunch of old stuff and use it in a new way? Why are you complaining? And again, on the surface, I would say you're right. However, this time my issue lies more with the execution rather than the content. Whereas series 11 used a lot of original concepts like the Stephen Moffat era, but without the creative spark required to make them work, series 12 utilized a convoluted storyline based off of previously established lore, like the Stephen Moffat era, whilst ditching original concepts in favour of bringing back fan favourite characters and aliens. The issue this time though is that those types of storylines require a lot of talent to pull off, so much so that even incredibly talented writers like Stephen Moffat and Russell T Davis couldn't always pull off said storylines, and as we established earlier, Chris Chibnall is not Stephen Moffat or Russell T Davis, meaning that Chris Chibnall did not pull off a gamble series effectively either, with the Times Child storyline being hand by many fans, resulting in the lowest viewing figures in New Who's history. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that the intention of this video is not to be a Chris Chibnall critique, as there are plenty of those already out there, including one that was broadcast live by yours truly. The point of this video is to show that the formula of reboot, gamble, and middle ground has long since passed its sell-by date at this point. This wouldn't be a very helpful video, however, if I just complained the whole time, so I'm going to offer some constructive criticism that could help the next team freshen things up in the Doctor Who department, because as I mentioned earlier, it appears to me that Series 13 is already set to complete this tired cycle one more time. Number one, the reboot series aren't bad, just say me. As much as I've complained about the show's tired old format for this video, I understand the need for a reboot series of sorts, with a show that changes things up as frequently as Doctor Who does. However, they don't all have to be the same. They don't all have to start with the Doctor regenerating, crash landing the TARDIS on Earth, where they slowly figure out who they are and meet their friends for the first time, or in some cases, all over again. Not all first episodes have to end with the Doctor finding a new costume, or or seeing the new TARDIS interior, or getting a new sonic screwdriver. They don't all have to have teasers to future plot lines that won't be relevant for a few series. Spice things up a little. Maybe have a series that's completely earthbound, like in the 70s, or another series set in a school, like series 10. But what about a series where the Doctor can't remember how they regenerated, and they remember more and more throughout the series? I know I'm not the first person to say this, but why does every companion have to be from 21st century England, with the majority of them being conventionally attractive 20 year old women? Don't get me wrong, I understand why Russell did it because it was important to have an audience surrogate to help guide newcomers through all the crazy sci-fi concepts. But we live in an age now where the most popular movie franchise of all time features talking trees and raccoons and a giant purple man with deadly jewelry. So I think people are ready to accept more variety when it comes to companions. Hell, if you really want to get adventurous, have it set in a parallel universe, or the past, or the future. The sky's the limit. Just make it different from what we've seen before. 2. Don't rely on nostalgia, shock value, and lore changes. 
This is something that both Stephen Moffat and Chris Chibnall have fallen victim to in order to keep audiences invested, with the two best examples of this in my opinion being Series 9 and Series 12. With Series 9 featuring the return of classic Daleks, Davros, Missy slash the Master, as well as the long-awaited return of Gallifrey alongside the highly controversial hybrid story arc. In a similar vein, Series 12 features the return of Captain Jack, the Jadoon, the Cybermen, and the Master, in addition to the destruction of Gallifrey, again, as well as the even more controversial Timeless Child story arc. Now don't get me wrong, there is nothing inherently wrong with bringing these things back, provided they serve some kind of function. Unlike, say, Captain Jack in Series 12, for example, whose purpose for being there was purely to deliver some expository dialogue that could have been delivered by anyone. There is also nothing wrong with arcs that involve changes to the canon, provided they a don't detriment the character's development thus far, b directly affect what's happening in the present rather than never being mentioned again, and c don't solely rely on you having an interest in the lore that it's making changes to. If you do these things correctly, they can have potential to tell great stories, just don't use them all the time because it comes across as desperate. Three. If you have an idea, stick to it. Something that Stephen Moffat became somewhat notorious for was caving to fan backlash too quickly, and this is something that I would like to see change for the next era of the show. Now don't get me wrong, I think that listening to fan criticism is important, especially if the ratings dip due to the idea that you had. But don't just immediately do a 180 the moment you receive any sort of backlash because it makes the show feel really inconsistent and hard to follow. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see what the Paradigm Daleks could have been despite the somewhat questionable design, especially considering that since their retirement it was revealed that they were intended to all have some kind of secondary weapon, and I think that sounds awesome. Same goes for the 12th Doctor. I would love to see a version of Series 9 and 10 with the Rebel Time Lord who was originally set up in Series 8. If you have cool ideas like those that aren't initially appreciated by fans, then by all means stick with them, because as much as people might hate me for saying this, the fans aren't always right, and that includes myself. 4. Utilize the show's iconic monsters more in the marketing. Something that Channel Pup pointed out to me a few months ago is that the most successful series of the show, in terms of viewing figures, heavily feature the show's iconic villains in the promotional material, whereas the lowest viewed series tend to be the ones that don't really feature any monsters in the marketing, with the only exception to this rule being Series 11, due to the fact that the gender swap and the social media storm that followed was enough to temporarily boost the show's ratings. This is one of the reasons I think that Series 12 experienced such a drop in ratings compared to its predecessor, as despite the fact that it featured the return of several iconic villains, they weren't really pushed in what little marketing there was for Series 12. Additionally, the novelty of Jodie Whittaker's casting that Series 11 relied on for its marketing had worn off by the time the follow-up rolled around. Five bring in a completely new showrunner. The final thing I think may be contributing to different series of the show feeling the same is that the showrunner position keeps getting handed down to people in the same friend group who've all written for the show before. Sure, they've written for the show before and that's great, but why is it always the same few people who are considered? Why not choose someone like Neil Gaiman? Hell, why shouldn't an American run the show? As long as they can write good sci-fi, who cares? Can you imagine Justin Roiland, the creator of Rick and Morty running Doctor Who? To be honest, I don't really care who they choose as long as they do something completely different and new with the show. If it wasn't obvious enough, I love Doctor Who, and I more than likely will until the day I die, but lately I've become disinterested and unimpressed with the direction of the franchise. So much so, in fact, that I completely rebranded my channel multiple times in order to incorporate more of the stuff that I'm interested in, and despite everything I've said today, I'll still probably watch Series 13 and vent about it, because this show is just part of my DNA at this point. But if there's one thing I can ask you all watching this video today, it's to save the rip Doctor Who comments as being negative all the time without having any constructive criticism gets you nowhere and ultimately achieves nothing, except spreading more upset in a year where the world is already kinda shit. So let's all just have a nice, civilised discussion in the comments below about what you like and don't like about the show as a whole, as well as what you'd like to see from it in the future, because at the end of the day, it's just a TV show. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Ha, making these Doctor Who video essays is easy. No wonder that Harbour Worms guy is able to crank out this lazy content so quickly. What did you just say? Nothing.